Welcome to 3CI Training. My name is Ron Shaw and I'm going to be your video professor for this little short video on how to create and set up inner VLAN routing. But the first thing I'd like to do is let's show our topology table and how things are set up. Now, we started out originally with a 192.168.1.0 uh, with a CIDR notation of 24. Now what I need to do is I'm going to take this address right here and I'm going to subnet it into four equal network. Now the reason why I'm going to need to do that is because I've got four VLANs pre-configured on this switch. VLAN 1, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30. Now as you can see here the VLANs red or VLAN 10 is assigned to ports 6 through 10. VLAN 20 is associated with ports 11 through 15. VLAN purple, which is uh, VLAN number 30, which is assigned to port 16 through 20. I've got a router here that will be configured with inner VLAN routing. And the reason why we're going to need to do this, let's say I, I have a situation where I've got a host on this VLAN right here that needs to get access to the management VLAN. Well, um, I can't have everybody on the same subnet because a device connected on this network here could not communicate with the device over here. Now, uh, in order for us to facilitate communication from one VLAN to another, I have to set up a router or have a router in there because remember, we're going to be going to different networks. Also, now since each one of these routers are going to be, uh, since each one of these uh, VLANs can uh, stop broadcast it also helps us uh, keep our broadcast traffic down and increases the security level now let me show you some of our configuration tasks here now the switch has been partially configured with information I've already got the switch configured with a management VLAN on VLAN 1 I've got a PC connected to port 16 and after doing the subnetting since I needed to create four networks I just broke them down equally and you can see the uh, assignments of my network IDs the dot zero network with a CIDR notation of 26 will go to VLAN 1 the dot 64 network will go to VLAN 10 the 128 network will go to VLAN 20 and the 30 or VLAN 30 will get to 192 over here you can see the respective host ranges for each one of the networks now, my host already has a IP address of 192.168.1.194. Now, what you're going to see here in a few minutes is how to set up the router. So what I'd like to do first is go to the router and set here and do some configurations on the router. So we'll come in here and we'll set up the router. So first thing we're going to have to do is get into the configuration mode. Now, as you can see here, I have to enable the fast Ethernet interface, so or the physical interface. So I'll go FA0, go to that interface, and then I'm going to give it a no IP address just to make sure that there's no IP address assigned. And then, of course, it's going to be very important that I issue the no shut. Now, the next part of this is, is going and creating sub-interfaces for each one of these individual networks down here. Now, so, from here, what I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to create sub-interfaces in here. Now, the command for that is going to be FA00, and then dot, and then whatever sub-interface I want. Now, I like to take this number right here and associate it with my VLAN. So, that way, I can keep all my VLANs and networks uh, in relationship to the number to the sub-interface number here. Now, it really doesn't matter. I could sit here and do one, I could sit and use any one of these numbers here. And it would not have an effect on the uh, configuration. It's just for keeping things straight and management purposes. So, so let's go back to the router. And the first thing I'm going to do is get into the sub interface one. Now, I got to issue an IP address. So, what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to get, um, but first, before you can give it an IP address, I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. Uh, let's say I'm going to give it the 192.168.1.1, which is the first available address. And then, of course, I'll have to put the subnet mask. Now, as we have already shown, the subnet mask or CIDR notation of 26 equals this. So, now, what happens is, um, giving it the address. Now, the next thing I'm going to have to do is set the encapsulation type. So, I'm going to do encap. 
and here we've got a couple of options now depending on the trunking protocol we're using between our switch and our router we're going to have to determine that now Cisco supports both dot one Q and ISL depending uh, or depending on which switch some switches don't even support dot uh, ISL at all and some don't support dot one Q so what you have to do is you have to know which switch you're using and its capabilities I'm happen to be using a 2950 series Cisco switch here so it only supports the dot one Q protocol so I'll just put dot one and then this number here if you notice is going to have to be associated with a number now this number is going to be the VLAN tag that I'm going to give to the traffic or associated to this particular sub interface so here it's going to be the native VLAN now again I'll issue no shut now the next command I'm going to go to my next interface which is going to be the, the 10 again this is just the number I've given it we'll assign the IP address so in here the first available for the 64 is going to be dot 65 so we'll go here and change this to dot 65 now let me show you something here I've already have some configurations there I'm going to say no encapsulation dot one Q 10 here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what would happen if I try and issue this command right here now because I don't have an encapsulation protocol set then you will get this command so if you see this command here all you have to do is give it an encapsulation protocol and then you'll be able to sign the IP address so let's go through and let me get the next sub interface here we'll go to the next one now we'll set here and give it an IP address so my first available one for the next network for VLAN 20 will be 129 so dot 129 now the next one here will do the NCAP again so we'll get encapsulation dot 1Q and this is 20 for VLAN 20 tags next one's um, then oh no shut don't forget this and then we'll go to the last interface which is going to be for VLAN 30 a sub interface and I'll give it an IP address of 193 and how do I know that well that's the first available address here I've already done my subnetting and then I'll set my end cap to 30 to match it and then of course no shut now from here I'm going to issue a very important command show run or excuse me show IP interface brief to get a brief summary now we can see all these sub interfaces now these are important addresses because let's say I have a host that's connected to port 6 which is VLAN 10 well his default gateway will be dot 65 now since my host is in VLAN on port 16 which is part of VLAN 30 my default gateway for my host is be 93 now we can come here and verify that information we'll open it up go to the network go to details and we can see my host address is 94 the gateway was 90, 193 and this um, subnet mask is 255.255.255.192 now let's sit here and make sure that my host or my router can ping various devices so I'm going to see if I can ping the 192.168.1.1 uh, let's say 1 everything looks good there uh, let's see if I can get the uh, 193 which is my gateway looks good there let's see if I can get my host alright everything looks good there let's see if we can get to the uh, to the switch default gateway so everything looks like it's working good here now the test is going to be really on your host and let's see if we can get anything on our host let's see if we can ping ourselves yep we're good there now let's see if we can ping the gateway 193 alright everything looks good there now let's see if we can actually get to the management interface on the switch Ah we have a problem here it's not working so remember I told you the switch was only partially configured so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go to the switch and check its configurations here because there's something not right and I told you it was only partially configured so what we need to do is we need to verify the switch configuration so I've in here changed over to the switch I'll get remote into it the first command I'm going to issue is a show run 
Now, before I do this, I'm going to tell you just some things that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to make sure that the port assignment is right. So we're going to have to make sure that port 30 is actually, in fact, assigned to VLAN 30, or port 16 is assigned to VLAN 30. We also have to make sure that this is a trunk here between these two, because if it's not a trunk, it will not carry VLAN information. We need to make sure that the switch is configured properly, uh, or for VLAN 1, to make sure it has a 62. And the default gateway on the switch needs to be set to this address right here. Otherwise, it will not work. So well, let's go in here and check these configurations here. So we'll look at the switch and do a show run. Now, the first thing we're going to do is check the switch and I can already see a problem right here. The interface for the Fast Ethernet 01 is not set as a trunk so that's the first thing I'm going to have to fix. The second, let's check port 16 make sure it's part of VLAN 30 and it is part of VLAN 30 or assigned to it. Now the next thing we'll look at the management switch of uh, the port it looks good with the proper subnet mass and then let's look at the default gateway for the switch. Now it's important that you set this because remember the switch is in, in a different subnet than your uh, host or your PC. So let's go in here and now let's fix this router. So it's going to switch config T interface uh, FA0 slash 1. Now I'm going to have to sit there and use the command switch port mode trunk because we've got to set this as a trunk. Control Z, WR, we'll write it just real quick. Now, let's check the switch and make sure he can ping his gateway. 192.168.1.1. Alright, looks good. Let's see if I can get the 193 gateway. Alright, it can get there. So let's see if we can get the host now. Alright, everything looks good. So from here, from my switch, I should be able to ping the 62 address. Let's let ARP work a second here. It's going to time out. It's timing out again. So we know my switch could do it. So let's go back and check and make sure I can get to the to the gateway. Make sure it's not a. All right, everything looks good there. And if it can't get here, then it's most likely it's a host problem here that I'm having my issues with. Okay. We've got back in here. Everything looks good here. Now, the problem was, and it looks like it's going to work now, is that my host was actually connected to two different networks. I was on my, I had a wireless network that was in here causing the problem. So now, I am not sure if I have Telnet enabled, but if we did have it in here and enabled, I should be able to get to this address. But as you can see, Telnet is not enabled on this device, so uh, it's not recognized as external command. Not a problem. I know that uh, I don't have this feature added on my uh, on my laptop. Now, but the important thing is I can ping the switch. Uh, excuse me, I can ping the switch, and everything would be able to function properly if I had the uh, Telnet section set up. Now. That's all it is to set up inner VLAN routing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little video and, and hope to come back and see you again at 3citraining.com where I have a multitude of uh, practice exams for the CCNA exam and CompTIA Security Plus A+. Thank you and have a good day.